Hello. This uh, short video presentation is going to introduce time derivatives of both voltage and current in RLC second order circuits. And I'm going to do it through two simple examples here. Let's see what I have. Before you start trying to find time derivatives of voltage and current in RLC circuits, there's a couple things you definitely have to understand, completely understand. And it's the comparison here between a capacitor and an inductor. Let's start by taking a look here at a capacitor on the left-hand side. Energy is stored in an electric field in a capacitor. And voltage cannot change instantaneously across its plates. So this equation right here is extremely important. You understand that if you are either going to close or open a switch at t equals 0, I don't care if you're opening a switch or you're closing a switch at t equals 0. It makes no difference. The voltage across the capacitor before you throw the switch has to equal the voltage across the capacitor at the exact instant the switch is thrown, which has to be equal to the voltage across the capacitor after you threw the switch. That's what that tells you. This equation right here deals with first order systems, so we're not going to worry about that. And here's the next thing you have to understand. Observation. In a DC steady state condition, when all short-term events called transients have settled out, capacitors look like an open circuit. So remember, capacitors look like an open circuit to DC. And then finally, this equation right here. The current to the plates of a capacitor with respect to time, is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage across the plates with respect to time. Very important three, co important three concepts there. For an inductor, let's take a look at it. Energy is stored in an electromagnetic field around the coil. Current cannot change instantaneously through an inductor. So I don't care if you're opening a switch at t equals 0 or you're closing a switch at t equals 0. The current before you activate the switch has to equal the current at the exact instant you activate the switch, which has to be equal to the current after you've activated the switch. That is extremely important. This right here applies to first order systems. We're not going to worry about that. Observation. In the DC steady state, when all short-term events called transients have settled out, inductors look like a short circuit. To DC, inductors look like a short circuit. And finally, the voltage across an inductor is equal to LDI dt. So you can see the parallels between the two, but you have to get this page down completely understand what I just told you before you can look at the time derivatives of voltage and current in RLC circuits. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this problem right here. For the circuit shown in figure 1, the value of R is 2k ohms, L is 250 millihenries, and C is equal to 10 nanofarads. The initial current in the inductor is minus 4 amperes, and you can see where that's shown in the circuit here. And the initial voltage across the capacitor is 0 volts. These initial conditions are very important when you work second order systems. So when you're working a second order system, even when you're going into trying to find out whether it's overdamped, underdamped, or critically damped, which is another video I give you, you always have to establish the initial conditions. Now, the initial conditions, either you look at the circuit and you determine them, or in this case right here, they're giving you the initial conditions. So if you take a look here, the initial condition is the voltage across the capacitor. It's a parallel circuit. It's the same voltage. The voltage across the capacitor at zero is equal to zero volts, given 
in the statement of the problem and the current in the inductor at zero times zero is equal to minus four amperes. You always have to establish initial conditions. Either find them or they're given to you. You always have an initial condition voltage with the capacitor and you always have the initial condition current with the inductor. They're not going to give you voltage across the inductor and they're not going to give you current to the plates of the capacitor. It's always voltage with the capacitor current with the inductor. What we want to do here, if you take a look, is we want to, for the circuit shown, what is the initial value of the time derivative of the voltage across the capacitor? Well, the way you establish that, you don't have to go to a characteristic equation like you would in second order systems. This is all done in the time domain here. If you take a look by Kirchhoff's current law at this node right here, the currents are all leaving. So I would show that as a negative IC at zero plus minus IL at zero plus minus IR at zero plus has to equal zero. That's just Kirchhoff's current law. Now, Kirchhoff's current law has to hold true at zero minus at zero and at zero plus. So I'm just going to multiply through by a negative one there and I'm going to get a plus there, I'm going to get a plus there, and I'm going to get a plus there. Now if you take a look, what is the current to a plate of a capacitor? Well in this case it's going to be C derivative of the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus dt. What's the current at zero plus? Well, the current can't change instantaneously. So if the initial condition told you the current at zero is minus four amps, the current at zero plus has to be minus four amps. And what's the current, what's the voltage across the, uh, um, what's the current in, in the resistor? Well, if you take a look, that's plus or that's a uh, plus I R of zero plus, which we just bring down. And that's equal to zero. Well, I think you could see here that this value right here is simply using Ohm's law is the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus divided by the resistance value up there. Well, if you take a look, the voltage across the capacitor at zero is zero volts. Voltage can't change instantaneously across the capacitor, so that numerator has to be zero. So this term here all goes to zero. And you're going to get C dVc a zero plus dt is equal to four. you take a look at the value of C was up the top, C is 10 nanofarads. C is 10 nanofarads. So the derivative of the voyage across the capacitor at zero plus dt is equal to four over C, which is equal to four all over the capacitance, which he said was 10 times 10 to the minus ninth. 10 nanofarads. And that turns out to be equal to 2, 4 times 10 to the 8 volts per second. And that's your answer for the time derivative of the voltage in that circuit with respect to time. Now, you might ask, well, what about the time derivative of the current? Well, if you take a look, 
it's a lot simpler to find in parallel circuits. The reason is because you know that the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus has to equal the voltage across the inductor at zero plus. Well, why? Because it's a parallel circuit. Because that's a parallel circuit. They have to be equal. That has to be equal to L di at zero plus dt. And all that has to equal zero. Why? Because the voltage across the capacitor at time t equals zero was zero volts. So the voltage across the capacitor at zero plus has to stay at zero volts. And you could see that the derivative of the time derivative of the current in that circuit which is the time derivative of the uh, dt and that's it. that's in the inductor by the way it's time to the current in the inductor is equal to 0 all over the inductance who cares what the inductance is the numerator is 0 that gives you 0 amperes per second and there is there is the time derivative of the current in the inductor at zero plus it's zero amps per second so that's one problem it shows you how to work it out let's do a let's do another circuit real quick time derivative and we'll use this as an example here. For the, for the circuit shown in figure three, there's the parameters. It gives you IS, the source current is two amps, it gives you L, C, R, S, and R1. You can see where they're positioned. After the switch has been in its initial position for a long time at t equals zero, it moves instantaneously to the left as shown in figure three. What's the initial value of the time derivative of the capacitor voltage in the circuit but we'll find we'll find both here just takes a minute to find both so initial conditions are extremely important in this case we're not giving you the initial conditions you have to find the initial conditions this is where you have to realize where are you at t equals zero minus to establish the initial conditions well you're in position a and then you switch to position b okay so you're in position a initially so your initial conditions that you have to pull out of this circuit here if you take a look the current IS is two amps and that capacitor looks like an open circuit to DC so the voltage across RS is going to be the voltage across the capacitor plates so you can see here that the initial condition VC of zero is equal to 2 amps times a resistance of 10 ohms, which is RS. All that current is going to flow through here. And you're going to get initial condition of 20 volts for the voltage across the capacitor. You might say, well, wait, there's a, there's a resistor here. Well, there's no current flowing through it because that capacitor is an open circuit. So there's no voltage drop across it. So the voltage drop from this point to this point is the voyage across the capacitor. That's the open circuit. There's no current flowing through R2, so it doesn't add to any voltage. Now you want to take a look at the current in the inductor at zero. Well, it's in position A. It's a source-free circuit. It's an open circuit. So the current is zero amps with the inductor. There's your initial conditions that are very important. 
Now, if you take a look, we're going to throw the switch, and we want to get the time derivative at that point. So what I'd do is I'd redraw the circuit real quick. I'd just get down here and I'd redraw the circuit. looks like this. I'm going to combine those two resistors into one resistor. Bring the R2 up and add it to the R1 because you end up with a situation like that where that field's going to collapse like this. That inductor, don't forget, it's going to, the current's going to, it's going to maintain the same current. The field's going to collapse. So in this case right here, you end up with Two point oh one ohms. This is five millifarads, and this was five millifarads. Millihenries, five millihenries. I'm getting that from the statement of the problem there. So by Kirchhoff's voltage law now around this node here with the current flowing I. I'm just going to go around the node there. And notice that we have a VL zero plus plus VL is zero plus minus VR of zero plus minus VC of zero plus equals zero. As we go around that loop in a clockwise direction. So I end up with the voyage across the inductor is L di is zero plus dt minus voyage across the resistor I of zero plus times R minus the voltage at zero plus. Well, the voltage at zero is 20 volts. Voltage can change instantaneously across the capacitor. That has to be 20. That has to equal zero. Well, if you take a look, the current at zero plus in that middle term there, the current at zero plus has to be zero amps. The inductor is going to maintain the same current through that instant of time. If the current through the inductor is, the initial condition says it's zero amps, it's zero plus it has to be zero, so this term goes to zero. And you end up with di at zero plus dt is equal to 20 all over L. If you take a look at L up there, it was 5 millihenries, and you plug that in right there, you're going to get 4,000 amps per second. And there's your time derivative for your current in that circuit. But what we wanted was, I wanted to get both the current derivative and the and I wanted to get the voltage derivative across the capacitor. So we want derivative of VC at zero plus a DT. That's what we want to find. We want to find what that's equal to. Well, in a series circuit, pretty easy to find that. Why is it so easy to find that? Because the current in that series circuit at zero plus, which is the current in the inductor, has to equal the current in the capacitor at zero plus. It's a series circuit. And we know that the current in the capacitor at all instants of time is C dVc of zero plus dt. Well, from the initial condition, we know that the current in the inductor was zero. We know that was zero. We knew this was zero. So what you're going to end up with here 
is dvc time derivative of which across the capacitor dt is equal to 0 divided by c. Well, I don't care what c is. The numerator is 0. So you get 0 volts per second. And there's your time derivative for that. I hope this video helps you out on finding the time derivatives of voltage and current in RLC circuits. Those initial conditions are very, very important. If you enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my channels. I'd really appreciate it. Best to you. And that concludes this video.